Welcome to Beans and Breakdowns, a podcast dedicated to bridging the gap between specialty coffee and the heavy music community. On this episode, I'm joined by Kyle O'Meara, vocalist of the band Cohesion, and also one of the team members that puts on Hold Your Ground Fest in the greater Toronto area. So grab a fresh cup of coffee and wake the fuck up! What's going on, Caffeinated Crew? Today on the podcast, I'm joined by Kyle, vocalist of Cohesion, also a part of the team that runs arguably the best Canadian hardcore fest. Hold your ground. Uh, arguably. You, I don't know. It depends what the people are saying. Groundbreaking? Uh, groundbreaking I, I hardcore say, fest? I, I'd say groundbreaking for sure. I, yeah. um, I don't want to say like we're the best or we're the biggest be that kind of person but definitely groundbreaking last year was crazy yeah so we'll say that groundbreaking canadian hardcore festival uh one of the first since uh, the pandemic that has seen a a good uh, combination of like western and eastern hardcore uh, as well as the guys from across the the border coming up so uh videos looked awesome we would definitely be talking about that but first let's talk about some coffee what are you drinking so today, um, I hit up a local coffee shop uh, in Toronto here called Arvo. Oh yeah. Um, so I got a large vanilla oat latte. So a bit sweeter uh, than I wanted. Um, a bit sweeter than like I usually drink, I guess. Um, but yeah, today just I felt like something sweet. So you know what? I'm gonna get something sweet. Um, but yeah, it's super super good though. Um, just a bit on the sweeter end. Um, yeah. What are you drinking? I have something a bit frilly. It is a coffee from Prodigal Coffee. I think it's roasted in Montreal because I bought it at a roaster. Uh, but it's Finca Betel Geisha. It's so it's a a, a Colombian geisha. Um, I believe it's washed, and it tastes like blood orange, nectarine, and some floral notes. And it's in a cute little pink bag. Nice with gold. That's so awesome. It's, it's bougie. Sweet. It's like something you'd see at like Hudson's Bay or something. I don't know. Hell yeah. Shout out to my American friends that have no idea what Hudson's Bay is. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm um, surprised you did. Yeah, being here not too long. That's pretty uh, niche, I guess. I, I love the Bay, man. I love the Bay. The Bay rocks. So this is a great coffee. It comes in like really small bags because it's a, a micro lot. Uh, but it tastes incredible. Sweet. So cheers, cheers to you. Cheers. What's your normal coffee, like daily, daily grind? Daily? So um, I don't know if this is like frowned upon in the coffee community. I'm not like some coffee connoisseur, but um, I'm an espresso machine. So I usually rock those as soon as I wake up, like especially just like working and being busy throughout the day, I'll usually rock one of those. Um, And then I'll go out to like a local coffee shop. Um, Yeah, so it's like, my afternoon, my morning coffee is usually an espresso with just a bit of like oat milk. Mm-hmm. And then like later on in the afternoon, I'll go out and get like a local coffee if I need a second one usually. And uh, I'll get like just like a like a medium like black drip coffee, whatever that they have. Um, or sometimes I'll get another latte, whatever I feel. Um, I'm a guy that's like hot coffee in the winter only for okay. the most part. And then from like spring until like late fall iced coffee the rest of the time like if it's like a cold day i'll get like a nice warm cup of to warm me up oh yeah but uh other than that cold coffee for most of the year i guess unless it's freezing outside but i'm just like eh. yeah <laughs> are you non-dairy or are you vegan i'm not vegan um but i stay away from dairy as much as i can um in order to drinks at least um which is kind of funny because like mm. everything else, like i'll still eat cheese like all the time <laughs> um and like butter and shit but like Same. coffee wise it's like if i'm gonna have coffee i don't want milk i don't want cream in it it's mm-hmm. oat milk um i like almond milk too i'm more of an oat guy the nuttiness of the almond milk throws me off that's my only thing yeah, I find it too watery too. Sometimes mm-hmm. depending on the almond milk you have, um, especially in iced coffee, it's like I don't want to water down it anymore. It's so gross. it's like almond milk is just, yeah. Old milk and iced coffee is definitely better. 
I was so happy to discover oat milk and cereal. It's like uh, an elevation of flavor. It's so good. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, um, oat milk and then yeah, I had almond milk and cereal yesterday, actually, for the first time in like a minute and it's still that really good. good. Yeah, because yeah. actually the, the characteristic of almond milk, like the flavor of it would, I think, complement certain sweet cereals. So that could be yeah. cool too, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Actually, I I wanted to say I appreciate you getting Arvo. That's like a really respected uh, local Toronto shop. Um, I'm in like a, a coffee chat on Discord um, with some people from the States and, you know, Alice. Yeah. Uh, so Alice and Alec, they're, they're in it as well. And Alice is always like, Arvo. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> Shout out your favorite <laughs> Toronto shops, Arvo. It's like, we know Arvo is good. That's crazy. I was was not expecting you to be like, oh, I know that coffee shop. Uh, yeah, but that's sick. Yeah, I'm a pretty big fan of it. Um, because I live in the neighborhood in Liberty, Liberty Village in Toronto. Mm -hmm. um, and my old office used to be like right above Arvo and then we moved to the other side of town. Um, but yeah, when I was like at that office, I would just like go down like in like on like an afternoon break and just grab a cup of Arvo. Nice. I've never been in to Arvo, but I, I've definitely heard the name and seen their stuff. And I've been really wanting to try Major Treat. I don't know if you've been to Major Treat. No, I haven't yet. I see a lot of people posting about it and like hearing some good things, but I haven't yet. I'll probably make the trek. I, just, I definitely want to like experience definitely more shops. Like once it gets a bit warmer outside, mm -hmm. I'm always keen on trying like anything new. Um, when I was in Montreal, I tried something that was pretty good. Um, fuck, I, Alec or like, uh, recommended it. Oh, it's Piccolo. Um, I went there. So I went there on the most recent time I was there. Okay. Um, but when we were there in the summer for the Prowl release, um, it was somewhere else. I want to say it was maybe Milk. Milk is good. Um, it might have been Milk or Pista. Uh, and that was another one he told me about. But, Pista's my um, favorite. It's so good. I want to say it was milk. Anyways, I had the best like croissants and like the latte was really good. So I was very happy with that. Yeah. Montreal coffee is good. Montreal coffee is crazy good. Like it's, yeah. I, I feel really spoiled living here just because of the sheer amount of shops and roasters that we have. If you like coffee, come to Montreal. And yeah, <laughs> need to do a coffee tour next time I'm there and just like, like three a day of just different shops stay there for like a few days and just bang it all out in the summer you gotta do it in the summer it's great because you can walk around most places or like metro and then walk around because metro is so small here yeah yeah that, that'd be so fun that's a good one you like to eat i love to eat big eating guy what's your favorite thing to eat um oh that's a good question i love a good steak Okay. You can't go wrong with a good steak. So you're definitely um, not a also, vegan. No, 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 <laughs> not at all. Uh, definitely a good steak. Um, wings, like it doesn't need to be fancy all the time. Like nice quality wings are good. Um, a nice burger, a nice chicken sandwich. Like I'm pretty like easy going. You like, you like uh, heavy plates. Heavy plates are good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gotta get that protein in. Do you go hot for the wings? I go hot. I don't go super hot. Um, I like enjoying them like a bit, like depending on like where I go, it's like I'll get hot or like, yeah, hot's usually like my go-to, I guess, unless they're like kind of like mild in their hot sauce and like mm -hmm. maybe I'll go one step above, but hot's like the go-to or like hot and honey is really good. Oh, hot and honey. Whew. Or I'll get like a pound of hot and a pound of like honey garlic on the side sometimes um, or like a sweet chili Thai type oh, yeah. vibe is good as well. Um, I'm not picky. There's a spot here that all. does, there's a, a brew pub that does uh goju jang. So it's not crazy spicy, but it's flavorful. Like it's a punchy flavor. Yeah. I like the flavorful. I don't like it just being like hot for the sake of being hot. Um, <laughs> I think that's just like, I hate I that. It's weird. Scorch your mouth. Yeah. Like that's no fun. That's, that's not yeah. enjoyable. Who, what's the spot for wings in Toronto? So for wings in Toronto, um, I've really been uh, enjoying Duff's for okay. wings. Um, it's like that's like probably like a pretty basic answer, but I don't really care. It's yeah, there's quality <laughs> wings. Um, so I'll go there. I'll get a pound of hot, a pound of honey garlic, and some fries on the side, and a beer. That's nice, great meal, awesome. 
a pilsner for with wings is almost unbeatable. I know people will be like IPA. It's good for you. Do IPA, but a crispy pilsner. Yeah, I'm more of a lager guy. Okay, um, but yeah, I, I can definitely see see pilsners being good with uh, wings as well. Um, but yeah, and also IPAs. I love IPAs. Yeah. but IPAs with wings. When I drink IPAs, I don't even like really like to eat. No, it most of the time, or like I regret it when I do because it's just like so heavy, obviously. Um, but yeah, I love them. But like, I'll have like two just like chilling or like chatting with someone. But like, mm-hmm. I don't want to like have a meal with it. It already is a meal, <laughs> <laughs> especially when they do like the lactose infusion and all that, like lacto fermentation on the beer, and it basically tastes like you're drinking a glass of milk that's flavored like an IPA. Oh, I've never had one of those, but that just sounds unappealing. <laughs> it's good. It's good. It's got to be the right time. <laughs> Yeah. Let's talk about Hold Your Ground. Yeah. Let's talk about it. Last year was the first year. The lineup was crazy. I, I really wanted to go with Deadbolt because they got added to the pre show. Yeah. Uh, and Ryan from Deadbolt is in Bruiserweight with me now. So we're always, it's funny because we all just now, it's a big like hardcore group chat, but in person. And that's basically how our jams are, which is a lot of fun. Cause it's like 20 minutes of yeah. playing and then an hour of just like talking shit. It's great. Dude, that's the best. That's how it should be. Like mm-hmm. we, we schedule for that in our practices too. It's just like, we'll jam through the set a few times. We'll go outside, like certain people will smoke and we'll just like talk shit and just hang for like <laughs> half an hour, go inside again and run it again, do that mm-hmm. again and then leave. Like, so it's, much fun. It's dope. Well, I'm really stoked about hold your ground. I think last year, a lot of people, it kind of blew expectations out of the water. I don't think a lot of people, especially stateside, know what hardcore in Canada looks like. I mean, aside from like the usual suspects, comeback kid counterparts, I guess. Um, no warning, of course. Like bands like that that have been across the border, especially before a lot of the visas and laws and bullshit were put in place. But I think seeing videos even stateside people were like, what the fuck is going on here? And then you had bands like Pain of Truth, Gridiron, Momentum. Like, that's a crazy lineup. Yeah, yeah, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Really stoked. Um, Stoked on the response, the bands that were able to make it. Um, Yeah, just like people being stoked on it and saying stuff like, I can't believe these bands are like coming to Canada or like I've been waiting to see this band for a while. Just for whatever reason they can't go down south whether they don't have a passport they don't have like the money or they just don't want to travel um so it's cool that we like made it more accessible for canadians for like southern ontario old peeps and then like people in quebec as well it's pretty close so yeah i'm really happy with it really stoked yeah it's it's really cool what you guys were able to pull off last year i think this year's the expectations are going to be way higher than than people even thought last year yeah, that's uh, not what I want to hear. I'm a bit stressed about that, but uh, Sorry. yeah, no, we'll, we'll, pull, <laughs> we'll pull it off. Uh, we definitely have uh, a lot we've already confirmed, a lot that's going to be confirmed, um, a lot of tricks up our sleeve. We definitely leveled up overall in regards to even like organization of the fest mm-hmm. and like certain things we've done wrong. Like we had a meeting to like reflect on what we did wrong last year and what we can do to improve this year. Um, so even that alone is just going to like step up everything. Yeah. Um, and then as for the lineup, it's going to be a lot different this year. Um, yeah, definitely going to represent Canada maybe a bit more this year as well. Mm-hmm. And then still representing like like the goal of, not the goal, but one of the goals of Hold Your Ground actually was originally to bring up a lot of U.S. bands purposely that don't normally get the opportunity or get the chance to come up to play to Canada. Mm-hmm. So it's like that's something that's really cool to me because it's like even me as like, like a hardcore like fan outside of like being a fest promoter and being in a band it's like i always want to see these bands that like don't come up to canada right so it's like i'll just bring them here myself whatever (laughs) and that's the thing uh, a lot of promoters don't do they they have a hard time getting a hold of bands that don't have agents per se yeah and when you have to like reach out to the member of the band you know what i'm saying like you got to reach out to that guy like you got to find the lumpy of every band yeah exactly so it's a hard thing to do for bigger promoters, I guess. Yeah. And that's what makes it difficult sometimes because sometimes when they, it's a double-edged sword because one, it's like, 
I'd rather not deal with an agent at any point ever. <laughs> um, but at the same time, it's like some bands really suck at communicating. Yeah. So that's when an agent is good because they usually like will answer most of the time um, when you're like flashing money signs in front of them. Yep. Um, but like bands are just like, oh, like, let me get back to you. And then it's like a week, two weeks, three weeks. And it's like, okay, like we're good to play or like we can't make it work. And then it's like, yeah, or some people just don't respond. And then you find out after it's like, oh, like that message got lost. But like, we would have loved to play. Maybe have us next year. Like, I think that's happened with a couple bands from last year. I'm like, well, and if you guys can... just check that message. Well, even message then... requests are the worst. Yeah. Yeah message requests and then yeah some people just like don't even like have social media or they're not active on it so you have to find ways to connect to them um like I who it was um like division of mind don't have any social media so like getting in touch with them is kind of hard so i like i think we did some like sneaky shit to like get in contact with them and they're definitely one of my favorite like hardcore bands like modern day hardcore bands i'd say mm -hmm. so like getting them on the bill was huge and it was really stoked on that but we had to do we had to like pull some like strings like i even forgot how i got their contact and just did it and then harassed them into playing and they're like yeah we'll play and I'm like fuck yeah nice i had friends from uh montreal that went down and came back and all of their hold your ground swag and all they could talk about was division of mind that set was actually probably my favorite of the set looking back favorite of the fest looking back Although there was like a massive horseshoe during their set, especially, um, it just like, it sounded so crazy. I've been wanting to see that band for like so long. I almost saw that band back in like 2018 when I was in Philly. Mm -hmm. um, they were actually playing a show. I just saw a flyer of it. So I just got reminded they were playing a show with like no warning, never ending game. And like I think Blind Justice played in Philly. I was in Philly for the last Balance and Composure show. Um, so I was trying to do a thing where like I go to both, yeah. but it just like wasn't in the cards. Um, but yeah, so I almost saw them then, but I'm glad I saw them at Hold Your Ground at the fest we put on. But the the lineup for this year, can you spoil any? Do you have any spoilers? Um, I'm sure you may know some. Is that I true? I can neither no? confirm or deny. So you do, I guess, um, <laughs> knowing my information of where you've been. But yeah, uh, people will be stoked on it. Um, it's actually not fully complete to be mm -hmm. fair and to be honest, but like a lot of the the work is done. Um, you yeah, know, we're representing Canada again, yeah. coast to coast, uh, which I love um, because yeah, it's all about Canadian hardcore and like getting us more known and getting more exposed, uh, getting a little scoped exposure, you know? Ah, oh, see what you so, did yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, no, we're exposing like Canadian hardcore bands um, mm -hmm. like all across the, the coast to coast area um down south some bands from the states again confirmed um and we got like a few more bands we're trying to get something like more like from overseas but i don't think it's gonna work out um uh, but maybe Wait, next year who knows which side um i was thinking about some bands in the uk actually okay. um but yeah this time around i don't think it's gonna work out but maybe next year um yeah who knows but yeah it's Canada and U.S. bands. Um, there's going to be it's it's going to be the same amount of bands per day, basically give or take pre-show on Thursday as well. Mm -hmm. Same venue for both the pre-show and the main show. Um, I don't really want to spoil anything, but all I'm going to say is if you're listening, when is this episode going to come out? This week. Okay, then I'm not going to say too much. But all I'm going to say, I'll give you a hint. Um, we dropped a graphic that has like some images on it for the like uh early bird tickets that went out mm -hmm. so if you want to know who's playing there's some hints in that photo i've been telling this to multiple people and some people are like kyle what the hell are you talking about and then there are a few people that are like wait a minute you guys didn't do that did you and i'm like we did if we're thinking about the same thing but i am not going to confirm that <laughs> um so yeah it's a little fun teaser if you can uh, pick up on it get the easter eggs you gotta follow the trail exactly <laughs> but yeah the uh full lineup or like transparency should be coming out like within the next like month we think um i think we talked about something like a week after like ldb type thing dope yeah so uh but yeah that's basically what we did last year so probably around that same time and then we'll put the general like admission tickets out as well as uh, early birds went like pretty quick like in like 12 hours so hopefully general admission tickets will go fast as well um but yeah we're and stoked on it. It's only like 500 tickets, right? 
Uh, yeah, give or take. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, so get uh, like your, a good good chunk of them are already gone. So it's like once we put the generals up, you gotta you gotta be fast on that. Get your fucking tickets. Don't sleep. Like we uh we didn't really sell out until like the last few weeks last year, but I think it's gonna be way different this year just because like I guess we have more of a name now and people are like already like following us on Instagram and people are already like messaging us like when's yeah. the lineup coming out? What are the general tickets coming out? So it's like a bit different this year so we hope they sell quick as well um yeah and i hope people are stoked on the lineup yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be sick like crazy so when look out for general emissions pick up your tickets if you don't get tickets blame yourself you failed exactly uh, you fucked up you fucked up big time yeah i'm super stoked about it i'm planning to be there this year uh 100 because hell yeah i'm i'm super super st- happy to be a part of of montreal hardcore first and foremost but then canadian hardcore is like really coming up like it's it's i think people in the next few years are gonna are gonna learn like oh there's like some good shit happening on the other side of the border and we're nicer so exactly we're nicer but we mosh just as hard i think especially if you're from hamilton yeah Shout out Steel City. Where's everyone, my, where the Steel City boys at? at the, <laughs> everyone moshes hard at those shows. Um, shows in Toronto as well. Um, yeah, and Montreal moshes hard too. So like, shout out to all of us. Yes, shout out to the Quebec, Ontario Brotherhood. Exactly. There's like a, a point in time where there was like beef, it seemed like, yeah. um, like years ago. But definitely that shit seems to be squashed now, especially recently because like, for example like so many ontario bands are playing in montreal and like we're getting invited to play there like Mm -hmm. so that sort of thing is great um and vice versa like like we had deadbolt that hold your ground type Mm -hmm. thing um like we're gonna bring more montreal bands to hold your ground this year um yeah Yeah. gotta have that unity i think a lot of that goes with uh especially max max valier is always trying to reach out to people outside of the montreal scene I knew about you guys because I had talked to Mike a while back and he was like, you should check out this band. And then Alec and um, Will, of course, know you. So they were like, Cohesion's playing. Oh, my God. Um, And so when I got to see you guys, I was really stoked. But then I think a lot of people were not expecting what what came out of that. (laughs) Like, as soon as you guys hit the first note, it like erupted. Yeah, I like to think so too. Uh, that was a great show, first of all. Um, it was our first time in Montreal, first time under the province because we're still like a newer band. Um, but yeah, as soon as we like, we were kind of like, oh, what's going to happen? Like, we know it's going to be packed. Like, I was like texting Max about it. I'm like, so the show is going to be like packed, right? Or whatever. And he's like, yeah, like, mm-hmm. probably going to like sell out. I'm like, sick. Like, thank you for having us. We're so stoked. Um, the lineup, like, I looked to check out the bands on the lineup, like the other openers. I'm like, okay, sick. They're all good. Uh, seemed like maybe like mostly newer bands um so yeah when we got there I'm like wow it is packed also it's like a million degrees in here um <laughs> which wasn't the best but uh the venue itself is nice yeah <laughs> that venue gets hot very hot and there's that big fan i don't know if you remember like that big fan that was off to the side and like people were moshing into it all night mm-hmm. and you just heard like yeah it's just like crack crack like the whole time it's just like i think they need to take the fan out they need to figure out a different solution yeah something or they need they need something else maybe get some ac um but yeah anyways that show is super sick and like yeah like you said like on our first note and our first song i'm like damn like this place like erupted i'm like these (laughs) people probably don't there's probably five people here that know us realistically and the fact that people are just moshing and they're dancing and they're just like some people are like singing along and i'm like damn this is crazy like this is we're very thankful to be here uh very happy about it um very happy like max asked us to play like mm-hmm. this is awesome so and then that same reaction happened again when we were with prowl in uh in november so that was awesome were yeah. you at that show as well no no in november yeah, it was with Prowl, Category, uh, Deadbolt, and Cloned Apparition played as well. Yes. yes. Yes, I was at that show. I had to think about it for a minute because there was like a shit ton of shows in the fall. I know. I remember that. I remember I'm like, damn, is there one to come to this show? There's so many sh- this week alone. Yeah, uh, it was crazy. And for a while, I was trying to go to all of them. 
I actually shut away, did their EP release, and the same night that band that Will and I were in got added to this like metalcore EP release show that was a wash, like terrible. And literally, we opened. I packed up my shit as fast as I could, threw it in my car, and drove down to Foofs so that I could get to the shut away. And I got there right in time to see Rust like halfway through their set. I was so happy. Uh, I was so happy. Rust and Gavel. See, this is the thing. This is people need to know. The Ontario Quebec like like connection is getting so strong and like hyped. It's it's gonna be wild to see what happens. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, that was super cool too. I noticed I was quite familiar with that show. It was like the Shut Away release show and like mm-hmm. Rust Gavel, and then there's a couple Montreal Offside bands. Offside played, yeah. Offside. Um, yeah, so that was super cool. When I saw that, I'm like, damn, more Ontario bands playing in Montreal. Like, that's awesome. And like, Rust and Gavel are honestly some of Ontario's best. So, mm-hmm. very yeah. cool. Let's talk about Distorted Vision. Yeah, Distorted Vision. Let's go. So, it's it's kind of an evolution. It's it's kind of a departure it from is. the first EP. The first EP, very metalcore, very uh, Century New Media friendly, I think. Yeah. Um, and then this new one big infusion of of hardcore was yes that, yes sir was, was that always the goal that was always the goal so like uh in general cohesion was always meant to be like a metallic hardcore band with metalcore influence um but I, i've always wanted to lean more hardcore and like mm-hmm. less like metalcore um there's like different tastes like everyone in the band has different tastes um some are more metalcore guys some are more hardcore guys like i'm one of the more like hardcore guys um, so like I try to be like, hey, uh, just maybe try writing the riff like this more instead of like that. <laughs> I like I don't write like I come up with like one or two ideas total mm-hmm. on like this record. I think maybe one even. I don't want to take too much credit at all because there wasn't much. But um, I'm like, yeah, maybe like try writing it that way instead of this way. Um, sound more hardcore than more like metalcore. But like at the end of the day, like genres are dumb. I don't mm-hmm. really care. But like there is a certain sound like we're going for and. I think we're getting closer to it on distorted vision and i think and we're really proud of like what has came out from that but moving forward we're trying to like up our game as well for the next release whatever it is whatever it be a split ep um definitely not a full length yet but yeah split or ep or like a single that comes out next we're trying to like veer even more towards hardcore um nice. and probably more heavy as well so we're gonna see where that goes but yeah super happy we went the same producer uh vince Sullivan in hamilton nice. um so he helps us out with that he made it sound huge um we like constantly get like compliments on like oh it sounds so good like the production is so awesome and that's all vince he's a mastermind he's awesome uh super nice super friendly to work with um yeah is that a schoolhouse that's not schoolhouse is it not at schoolhouse um he actually um so he just like rents spaces um and then that he works out of like all throughout hamilton okay um i forget the name that's of, smart yeah i totally forget the name of the studio we went to um and then i remember we did like some of the vocal trackings actually in his bedroom too uh which was cool um but yeah we didn't do schoolhouse but yeah i know that's a sick studio in hamilton as well they just put out basically every ontario hardcore like release for the most part yes yeah they do they do a lot for ontario hardcore you guys did a run with prowl as well at yes. eastern canada so we didn't do eastern canada uh th- okay. there's another band kiss the sky did the eastern canada they're from uh out there and then we just did the um the ontario and montreal date um That's right. which was awesome uh we were gonna do like quebec city before then but like one of us can like get off work because it's like on a wednesday but um yeah we did montreal on thursday we did ottawa on friday saturday was barry and sunday was hamilton Mm. all four shows rocked um i want to say half of them were sold out yeah i want to say like half of them were sold out at least um and the other two did like really well as well um so very stoked on that very stoked on the turnout very stoked on like even the locals we played with were sick um especially hamilton was just a stacked bell um (laughs) yeah two bands in ottawa we've never even heard of played and then they brought out a shit ton of people as well and like they sounded sick where'd y'all play in ottawa pardon where where in ottawa did y'all play uh dominion tavern so it's just like a small like uh 
like kind of like divey bar type venue, but it's sick. Like for hardcore, it's perfect. Mm-hmm. Like you can stuff like a hundred kids in there, and like that's probably about it that's realistically. Cool. Um, but yeah, lots of mosh there. And like we were Ottawa is funny because like Ottawa was like, okay, we want to play Ottawa because we haven't been there, but we don't know how the hardcore scene is. Um, so we got the show set up uh, through Spectre Sonic. Um, so that was sick working with them, and they've been doing it for so long. And uh, the show actually was a lot better than we thought. We're like, yeah, like let's go in with like lower expectations. Whatever happens, happens. We walked in and we're like, damn, like at first, like no one was like there. And then like right as like doors were opening and just a shit ton of people flew through the doors. We're like, oh my God, okay, this is awesome. And then it's like, um, I couldn't even walk around the venue. Like I was trying to get to merch to like sit down and like try to sell some shirts. I'm like, I have to like, push people out of the way there's so many people here I'm like damn uh so that was that was cool i was stoked on that um i think it's because yeah. ottawa gets overlooked quite a bit to be fair i think so i think so they used to have a lot of like cool shit going in like the ottawa hardcore scene and then like something died down i don't know what happened and then mm-hmm. now it seems to be like booming again people are getting stoked on it uh there's cool. still like not a lot of bands though which is a problem Right. Um, so if you're in Ottawa and you're listening, start a hardcore band yes. um, and we'll come back and a lot of other bands will come back. If you're anywhere and you want to start a band, start a band. Just everybody start a band. Everybody start a band. Even if you can't play anything, you'll probably teach yourself to scream. Um, it's not that hard. Or um, play bass. Or play bass or play guitar. <laughs> um, just play breakdowns. Yeah. That's all just you need. learn power chords and you're fine. Yeah. Or learn power chords. Yeah. You're good. You can do it. You'll I be believe, fine. I believe in you. Yeah. What's what's going on for Cohesion rest of the year? Uh yeah, Cohesion rest of the year. Um, we're looking at getting together for our run in the spring. Um, all of that's up in the air. Um, we want to do it with another band. Um, we have a couple in mind, a couple we've been in contact with. Uh, more to come on that. But yeah, we're gonna hit hopefully some cities we haven't hit. Like we've been trying to play Windsor, Ontario so long. Yeah. They got like a really cool thing going on there. Half our band is from Windsor, like grow, grown up in Windsor. Um, so that would be really cool for them to play as well. Um, and then, yeah, I'm trying to think where else in Ontario haven't we played that's like worth playing. <laughs> Windsor's probably one of the last. Ah, we haven't played anywhere in like Kitchener Waterloo. So we play mm-hmm. there as well. That would be sick. Um, there's a band out in that area called Morn. Mm-hmm. Um, they're super cool, super they're heavy. Good. So we'd like to play a show with them. Um, Peter from our band's old band, Uplift, uh, has members in more and that were in Uplift as well. So that would be like a cool connection as well. Um, yeah, so playing in like Windsor, playing in like Kitchener, Waterloo. Um, and then yeah, eventually we're gonna get to, we've been like trying to do like a Buffalo show for a while. So hopefully that'll turn out Yeah, as well. Hopefully do something with like Final Declaration or Space um, out there. And then yeah, other than that, definitely we're due for Montreal again, probably in the spring or summer. So we'll probably play out there again. Um, I wouldn't mind going back to Ottawa, like I said, and then yeah. just keep grinding. And then hopefully do a fly in fest by the end of the year again, because we did Scope Fest in Calgary last year. Scope uh, five. Scoped five year, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, hopefully we do another one maybe in the States this year. We'll see. Uh, later in the year uh, yeah that would be awesome and then yeah see what we can do we also like talked about possibly like UK or Europe but I don't know if that'll happen this year now maybe next year I hate that the UK and Europe are more accessible for Canadian bands than the states is yeah like I did I did all like the financial breakdowns of that and like it's crazy to say that it's cheaper to go to Europe like it's more financially reasonable to tour Europe yeah. than to tour the States right now. Which makes no sense because we could easily just drive like eight hours and be in like Silly or drive yeah. and be in New York. Like some of the best places like on the East Coast for like hardcore. It's like, yeah, we can drive there pretty easily, but like legally we need a visa um and all that shit. So it's it's tough like that. But uh yeah. yeah. Hopefully something changes soon. It looks like it's getting worse. I think I saw something online saying they're like increasing visa prices like p2 visa prices by like 250 percent come on so that if that gets passed it's like there's so no many bands. Is, that's game over yeah so many bands are just gonna like even call it quits because like they're like damn we can't afford to do that just to tour the states which is the best market 
Like it just doesn't make yeah. sense. Especially yeah, for for the style of hardcore that Cohesion is playing, uh metalcore and metallic hardcore is definitely on the rise, especially if you like anything from Days and like Sharp Tone and Century New Media. That's like the sound. So it's really frustrating. It's frustrating because all my friends, like I can easily go to the States and play, but every band that I'm in and all of my friends would have to pay out their ass to go make a hundred bucks at a show in New York and sell three t-shirts. Exactly. Which like, it doesn't make sense. It's not, uh, yeah, it's not logistical enough to do it. I mean, some bands are, some bands are taking the leap and they're, they're just getting the visas and saying, fuck it. Yeah. Um, I'd love to do that too. Like, to be honest at this point, it's like, we'd probably find a way to make it work. Like you only need to sell a certain amount of shirts to like break even on it, I guess. You only need to like get a certain amount of guarantees, but like at the same time, it is a risk. You could come home like hundreds and hundreds of dollars each, like in the hole yeah. after doing like a little like week long tour in the state. So it's like, is it worth it? Um, yeah, that's up in the air, but yeah, we love, a- we definitely want to play the States at some point and yeah. just, we got to make it work for us definitely feel that with with all like any band that i've been in or or am in currently like offside was trying to get their visas and i think they halfway gave up just because the process is so stupid like even if you pay the money you're still gambling whether they'll get you the visa or not yeah which is crazy that part's like the probably the craziest for me like hearing that from other bands that have got it yeah. And it's like, damn, you're like paying the money, you're doing all that work and you still might just like not get it after like crossing all your T's and dotting your eyes. Yeah. It's like, damn, that's, that could be very shitty. It's sucks. I, yeah. It's, I guess it's necessary if you really want to like take it to the next level for your band, unfortunately. Or just get big in Europe. Just become like a Eurocore band. Yeah. Honestly, I wouldn't mind that. Like go to Europe, like tour Europe, like twice a year, um, like make money off that then do some canadian shit and then yeah. just say like fuck it to the states <laughs> i mean not to say f- that people in the states are deserve to like be skipped over but i've literally wrote like a senator to be like hey you guys should change this this is stupid and oh I, I didn't hear back but i tried Damn, that's cool that you did that though but i i was so like I, I i had a conversation with somebody that made me so mad that i like sat down and like wrote out an email to like the senator of he like sponsored some music bill and i was like i this is something that you care about but you should know that like you're missing out on cultural exchange that's awesome i actually love that you did that because like that's the perfect example of like doing something instead of just like saying something instead of just like tweeting about it angrily Mm -hmm. it's just like no i'm actually gonna do this because like who knows maybe he could have read it or maybe like he could be like if he gets enough of those letters, you're like, oh, maybe I should actually change this or like try to change this. Yeah. I mean, that's, I was like just hoping, but it was more like venting than anything. Like, hey, like this is really annoying. <laughs> Can you yeah. please try to do something about this? Like, I know it's a big process, but it seems like an easy thing to do. Right. Um. But yeah, I, I hope that one day it gets better. I don't know if any time in the near future it will, but uh, yeah you know good luck and to only you. hope for the best yeah. or like hope that someone will just like take care of it for us like if we get picked up by like a label or some shit or management and they're like yeah we'll just like take care of it financially and then it's like okay like yeah when do you want us to go we'll sign here let's go unfortunately that seems to be the easiest route to go yeah yeah it does but- um and yeah who knows if that's in the cards either um but yeah we're doing our thing we're like diy like hardcore all is diy just making oh, connections yeah. so we're totally fine as we are, but like, hey, if anyone wants to hit us up, then <laughs> hit us up. We'll see what we can do. What's up, Days? What's up, Lumpy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I wish all the best for you guys. I love Distorted Vision. I love the first EP as well. I'm blanking on this. Until you... Deal nothing. I got half of it. Yeah, yeah. You but got yeah, half of I- it. I uh, I really do like the sound of that as well because I was in a huge metalcore kick last year and and like or a late 2020 2021 oh my god what year is it 2021 uh, so when I got to see you guys I was like fuck yes this is so good I'm and glad then, you liked it appreciate that appreciate the words the apes breakdown like when you when it's like the monkeys ignited that's, that's our go to yes so. Uh, I can't wait to see what, what happens for you guys this year. 
Hell yeah, yeah. Hopefully we cross paths soon. Uh, I'll definitely be in Montreal at some point this year. I just don't know when. Maybe spring, maybe summer. I uh, get something going. Uh, yeah. But yeah, thanks for uh, having me. This has been awesome. And yeah, thanks for anyone who's listening still. Uh, check out Distorted Vision. Check out Until You Feel Nothing. Uh, we have new music coming soon and Cohesion in Your City coming soon. Yes, look out for Cohesion coming to Bust a Move. Hell yeah. Also get your tickets for Hold Your Ground when the generals go out because if you don't, you're a dummy. Exactly. Yeah. More info on that soon. Uh, follow us at Hold Your Ground Fest on Instagram. We'll post all updates there. Um, we got some spicy things cooking. That's all I'm going to say. It's spicy. If you like hardcore, if you like moshing, if you like breakdowns, um, if you like fast parts, maybe we'll have a fast band this year, like a super fast yeah. band, like super fast punk band. Um, maybe we'll have an emo band. Maybe we'll have a shoegaze band. Um, who knows? We're mixing it up. Circle pits. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> you just have to wait and see. But yeah, horseshoes, we're not going to have that. So if you want to come for the horseshoe, don't come. Not don't happens. even think about a horseshoe. Fuck the horseshoe. Exactly. <laughs> Everybody needs to stand at the front so that we can stage dive. Yeah, you'll be fine. You're not going to get moshed on. And if you do, just... I mean, your if, arm, you're, if, you're li- if you're listening, you can't see this, but I'm raising my arm. <laughs> this is good for audio only medium. Uh, put your arm. <laughs> <laughs> Just YouTube how to stop, how, how to block yourself from getting moshed on. That's exactly. We'll, we'll put a video up or something. Exactly. And yeah, <laughs> you'll, you'll be fine. Um, that, that was a thing. Like if I could talk about that quickly, like everyone was like, the horseshoe at hold your ground was so bad. The horseshoe at hold your ground gave me COVID. I saw so many like tweets about it. And it's like, yeah, the horseshoe at hold your ground was bad. Uh, but you got to realize there's a couple factors onto why that happened. One, uh, this is like the first hardcore fest that's happened in Ontario in like five years, I'd say, since like, uh, like heart fest, um, mm-hmm. and that sort of era. So it's like people in Canada aren't even like, they're not going to like US hardcore fest all the time. Some people are, but not everyone is. So like they're kind of, this is kind of a lot for them. Also the moshing is completely different at like this kind of fest as it is to like a show at like, even like that hard luck in Toronto or like a smaller, like hardcore show. Cause it's like, people are going a lot harder. The bands are a lot like heavier. People are more stoked, a lot more energy. So like people that go to these shows are like not ready for that all the time. Like these like kids from Ontario. Yeah. So it's like, and also there's a lot of U.S. kids coming up, and like the states mosh is harder than us. Um, so like when they're coming up to Ontario, they're gonna like demonstrate their style. So obviously it's gonna be different. And also another thing is the venue told us a certain amount of cap we can sell, and then they're like, yeah, this is the cap for the venue, and then we're like, okay, and they're like, uh, yeah, it's because like they usually do events where it's seated and there's tables. Yeah. So it's like, okay, um, but we're all going to have like general vision. Like we're pushing all the tables to the side to sell the merch, but it's going to be an open floor. And they're like, legally, we still have to do it at this cap. And I'm like, oh, okay. So like we sold over capacity, like quite over capacity last year. And it still looks like that. So now we've taken that into consideration this year. So now okay. we're selling even more tickets. Um, so it's going to fill out the room more as well. Cool. Yeah, we did. We weren't lying. We did legally sell it out last year, but now we're going to change that cap because it's all standing because we know it's still safe. So, well, Kyle, thank you so much for hanging out. Uh, I love what you're doing with Hold Your Ground and your booking and cohesion and Ontario Hardcore fucking rules. Um, So keep doing what you're doing. I have one last question before we go. What's your favorite city for beans and breakdowns? Favorite city for beans and breakdowns for like coffee and hardcore? Yeah. Toronto. I have to say Toronto. Good coffee, good shows. What's the best venue for shows in Toronto? Like small, like local shows? Hard luck for sure. Um, It's a perfect size, 300 cat venue, uh, very centrally located, uh, good stage heights, like good layout inside the venue, um, and lots of good shows roll through there. That's like my venue I book at for most mm-hmm. of the time. Um, I got a show there in March actually with some Montreal bands. Keep an eye out for that at Hard Luck. Oh yeah, oh. in general it's great. We do the pre-show there. Um, yeah, and then it's crazy because it's like when there's good mosh there as well. It's like it's not too big of a venue, so it gets like pretty crazy. Like with like ten people moshing. 
So, mm-hmm. but you can still fit 300 in there somehow, um, just based on their like fire code capacity. So it's awesome. It's great. Um, when I was chatting with uh, Lumpy at the pre-show last year, he was like, yeah, this is also my favorite like venue in Toronto as well. Like like all the bands like I've been in that's played here. It's like, we love it as well. So I'm like, yeah, yeah it's good. It's getting some recognition as well from the US bands. I love seeing videos from like the Toys for Tots and stuff like that because people go very hard. Yes. Yeah. Toys for Tots is always there as well. So like that's always a sick show as well. Um, yeah. Very stoked on that venue. Awesome. We did our first Toronto show there, which is Toys for Tots with Cold Shoulder mm-hmm. uh, in 2021. Was it 2021? Yeah. I think it was 2021 because I've seen that video a few times. Yeah. yeah that's it great. Was, hell yeah. Well, Kyle, again, thank you so much. I I really, really enjoy talking to you. Uh, I can't wait to get over to Toronto and Ontario for some shows soon. Um, and can't wait for Cohesion to be in Montreal again. Hell yeah. Thanks so much for having me. Um, yeah, thanks for taking the time. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah, if you're listening, go check out Cohesion and go check out Hold Your Gram Fest. Do it. Uh, enjoy the rest of your Sunday. You too. Thanks for listening to this episode of Beans and Breakdowns. I want to say a huge thanks to Kyle for hanging out on the podcast. Be sure to check out Distorted Vision, the new SDP from Cohesion Streaming Everywhere. Also, get your general admission tickets for the Hold Your Ground Fest happening in September. If you didn't get the early bird access, you do not want to miss out. It's going to be a great time. If you've enjoyed the podcast, please subscribe and leave a review. You can find out more information about the podcast by following us on Instagram at Beans and Breakdowns or on the web at beansandbreakdowns.com. Until next week, be sure to stay caffeinated and wake the fuck up.